for you and me. The price has already been paid. Amen? We just got to ask ourselves, how bad do we want to be free? How bad do I want to be free? Because I guarantee you, every person that's standing in this room within the sound of my voice has been in bondage or is in bondage today. Every one of us, to something, to some substance, to some relationship, to some sin, to some memory, to some painful past, we are in bondage in different places, and God wants us free. Okay? Jesus said, I am the way to freedom. I'm the truth, and I am life. So we get to Jesus, we get free. He who the sun sets free is really and truly free. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.
dangerous thing to invite the fire of God into your life. Let me just warn you. When the fire of God invades your life, invades your soul, invades all the secret places of your heart, he begins to burn away everything that you don't need and everything that's not pleasing to him. So when you invite the fire of God into our presence today, just be careful. Brace yourself because the holiness of God is going to impart itself onto you and fill itself with you. Sing it. God is an all-consuming, everything that's not pleasing to you, Lord. Christians for a long time. Some of y'all been coming to church a long time, your whole life. And maybe you don't remember the joy of your own salvation. Maybe you don't remember the fire that God lit in your heart when you were younger. Because you got worn down by life and too many bad things happened to you. But you're here today so I can tell you that God is not done with you yet. He's still got something for you to do. And he wants to start a new thing, a new work in your heart today. And it's going to require the fire of God to do it. Let's just close our eyes for 60 seconds and invite the fire of God to light itself again in our hearts and let it burn with passionate love for Him. Oh Lord, give us hearts that pursue You. Give us hearts that love Your Word. Give us hearts that pursue holiness and righteousness. Give us hearts that forgive and give grace to the sinner. Give us hearts that speak your truth in love, God. Give us hearts that care about the people around us who are dying and going to hell without you. Oh, light like the fire in our hearts again, God.
tell Jesus you love him this morning. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We thank you that you're here to do work. Thank you for the new work you're doing in our hearts today. Help us to keep our eyes on you. And seek your face and seek your will for our lives, God. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus. it is to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. And not just that, but to be in a country and to be in a city where freely you can begin to go as loud and as deep and as, as you know, spontaneous as your heart's desire is. So many times we take for granted the uh, opportunity that we have within this country to just worship our God. I don't know about you, but the reason why I worship with nothing holding me back is because something changed in me many years ago, and I'm still celebrating that transformation that happened in my life. I believe that as we continue to develop our worshiping, we continue to see just God move in such a great manner. And, you know, we're so blessed to have uh, the worship team that we do have. And that, and that Sunday through Sunday, they are just bringing everything that they have so that you, your, uh, 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 the people, can experience the atmosphere of change, of salvation, of, of triumph and victory. And we're so blessed to be able to also be uh, a, a part of your lives and that you are visiting us uh, on, on this Sunday and we want to let you know, remind you that we are just a gospel centered church that our heart literally is not just for this community but the world we are not only fellowship of the nations just yes, because it sounds pretty but our heart really is to continue to establish this message and uh, uh, of, of the gospel worldwide so we want to encourage you that as you are tithing and you're giving and you're being obedient unto what God God demands of you that you begin to understand that you're giving to a greater cause so that others in nations like Cambodia and nations like India and Pakistan and Nicaragua and Panama can all encounter this amazing Jesus that you are encountering this morning. So let's pray right now for our tithes and offering. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for all the things, God, that you continue to establish within our lives, Lord. Lord, we just declare, God, that you continue to bless your people, God. You give them the unexpected promotions, God, that they're seeking, God. Lord, you will qualify the unqualified, Father. You will uh, show them, Lord, that you have something so specific uh, for their lives, God. We thank you for the obedience. We thank you for the willingness uh, and generous giving, Father, for your gospel sake we thank you for all that you do in Jesus name we pray and everyone said amen. amen so we want to remind everyone that we are live streaming our services so if you do have a little one with you a little baby little child um, um, and, and they get a little fuss we have a cry room out in the foyer so you can continue to enjoy the service thank you and God bless Thank you for joining us here today at Fellowship of the Nations. Join us for the final message of Pastor Johnny's Freedom Series next week and learn how to walk in true freedom. Catch up on past sermons on FOTN.org to hear the whole series. Do you have a call to pray for people? Is great faith one of your spiritual gifts? Then you need to join the FOTN prayer ministry. Mirna Valdez is leading this group of intercessors and would like to meet with you and help you discover your calling to pray. Prayer training happens on Wednesday nights at 7, and our care groups have begun to meet monthly to pray together on the first Wednesday of each month. So come be a part of the Army of Faith at Fellowship of the Nations. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, so be sure to invite the special mothers in your life to join you for worship service at 1030 a.m. and receive a special gift from the church. Now, May 21st is Baby Day, so be sure to contact Baby Nation Director Samantha Thompson to get involved. 
May 28th is grad day at FOTN. So if you are a graduating student, either from high school or college, please let us know so we can include you in the special service. Have you tried out the new mobile text giving? It's safe and easy to give from your phone anytime, night or day. First, you text to the number 713-322-4609. A one-time registration is required. You enter the amount you want to donate, press send, and it's that easy to stay current on your ties. And we want to thank you for being obedient in this very crucial area of giving so that you can be blessed and so that the many ministries of FOTN can reach the nations of the world and our very own community. Now, everybody, go out and have a great day. everybody. How's everybody doing? No good? You glad you came this morning? Yes? All right, all right. Hey, I'm going to give a, uh, a quick commercial Hope Nation right here. I'm Martha and Caesar. I want you guys just to stand up. Would you do that? Hope Nation, the, there's going to be May the 12th. There's going to be in the Fellowship Hall. We're going to have uh, guest speakers, uh, Lance Bellany and his wife, and it's going to be a couple's thing. And so we want, uh, if you're interested in coming, they're going to have a meal served. So it's for all the uh, marriages, and uh, uh, it's just a special marriage thing for all you couples. So all you married couples, get a hold of them, let them know you're coming, and uh, you are going to have a great time. We'll all have a good time in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. Hope Nation is one of our new ministries that started, and uh, we believe that every member is a minister, and every minister has a ministry, and uh, man, it's exciting to see that. We've got, man, our Freedom Nation ministry is really blowing and going. They graduated a bunch of students uh, already, uh, and so we not only have our women's ministry going, we've got coming up in our juvenile detention uh, ministry, these guys, they're going to be starting a Saturday Bible study with uh, Aaron and James and some of the guys there, so we're very excited about what's happening there. And of course, uh, Felix is up here, him and his guys are in the men's unit, so we thank the Lord for uh, what's happening in all the different different ministries, and so anyway, to God be the glory, amen? Amen. Well, hey, let's say a big uh, welcome to all those here watching online. Greet you in the name of Jesus, glad you are here. Anybody got the word? Word up, hold it in the air like you really, really care. Say it together. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide His Word in my heart so that I might not sin against God. Holy Spirit, give me ears to hear and strength to obey. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. 
Well, I want to welcome everybody. I got to tell you, if you were not with us this past, uh, this past week, we, uh, we actually were going to do a family series. And uh, boy of the month, and I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit just went, Phew. no, you're not. You're going to do something different. And uh, <clears throat> it really was, uh, I think, based upon what was happening in so many people's lives. And, uh, and with that, we found that the, the Lord just showed me that, man, there's a lot of people who are bound. They're bound by uh, uh, some sin. They're bound by addictions. They're bound by things. And he said, I want to set them free. And so we just started the Freedom Series. And a lot of this is based upon, uh, there's a book that we've used in our encounter retreats. It's called Shadow Boxing. And uh, a lot of these, these notes come from some of that. And so uh, we just wanted to take you through that series so that we can take a look inside of our lives, an honest look, and to say, am I truly free? And so we sing about it, we can talk about it, he who the sun sets free is free indeed, and well, we can clap and everything, and we can get excited about it, but we have to take really an in-depth look at us and say, am I really free in these areas of my life? Because we wonder, why am I still struggling? Why are these things happening? So what we're going to do today is we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to do a fresh work in our hearts. Amen? Anybody ready for that? <laughs> All right. Now, when he reveals things, you know, he's doing it because he loves you. All right? And he wants to set you free. What we used to tell our, our sons when they were little, so listen, the reason why we got a little time of discipline is because we want to bless you and protect you. They didn't believe that at the particular time <coughs> when the Board of Education hit the seat of knowledge, but, <coughs> but it was uh, it's for their blessing and their protection. Listen, God works the same way. When he reveals something in our life, it's for our blessing and it's for our protection. Amen? So let me just uh, start this by, by, by saying this. The reason why some of us, we really suffer with these things in spiritual warfare. Sometimes when you mention spiritual warfare, you're like, ooh, uh, spooky stuff because you saw some weird movies and, you know, you're already freaked out. You know, what kind of church is this? I promise you there's no snakes up here. You know, <clears throat> I hate snakes. A good snake's a dead snake. And the people said... Amen. All right. And uh, so, no, we're not doing anything weird. God wants to reveal truth. And, uh, and the way he does that is obviously through his word. So uh, one, of the, one of the things that hinders us is, number one, is uh, the fact that some people don't believe in demons or they don't believe in a satanic being or that there's, you know, this spiritual world out there. Well, let me tell you. There is, because Jesus spent a lot of his ministry not only healing the sick, not only feeding, not only making the lame to walk, making blind to see. He spent a lot of time in his ministry was casting out devils, and because uh, there was a lot of demon-possessed people back then, all right? And uh, so that was part of his ministry. They have not quit working, all right? They are still working today, and they're slick, and they know how to take even Christians, and uh, instill their joy and their peace and their purpose in their life. And so this is what we want to talk about. The, other, the second thing is why people really struggle is because they don't understand the power and the boundless power of God himself. I mean, God is almighty God. There's, no, there's not, ooh, we got God and we got Satan, and ooh, they're going to battle it out, and hopefully, you know, Jesus is going to win, maybe. No, Jesus kicked tail at the cross. Amen. That's all I'm going to say about that. He's defeated. He is defeated. So we walk in that authority. That is our authority. In the name of Jesus, man, we've got power. By the blood of Jesus, there's power. So we're not going to be wimps. We're going to be warriors. Amen? So, but here's the third thing that this why Christians really suffer. And this is, this is a truth that may hit home with some of you. And that is we got some pet sins that we like. We got some addictions we like. And we got some, some junk that we want to hang on to. And you can say amen and everything else. And some of you, you're, you're going to walk away and you're going to go, that's a good message. But, you know, I kind of like what I got going here. Here's the thing. What you're cuddling up to is really a rattlesnake and it's poisonous and it will destroy your life. And so this is why we're talking about the Freedom Series. Amen. So here we go. Are you ready? I hope that you're going to take some great notes today because I really want to help you. One of the verses that, that I want us to learn, I'm just going to kind of share it with you. Uh, just remind you, use it last week. I want to remind you this week. And it's pretty simple. There was a guy who's... His, uh, we call him, uh, well, he had several names. One was Fred Frecklebelly, but his name was Larry. Brother Larry always would come up. He, he said when we first started our church, he said, uh, I want to be your armor barrier. 
And I thought, you're going to bury my armor? I mean, what do you know? My, you know, your armor, oh, bear, bear, I'm going to bear your armor. I said, okay, that's good. So every time I'd see Brother Larry, this is what he would say. He'd, he'd say, I said, man, how you doing, Larry? He said, man, I'm carrying a 44 for Jesus. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, 1 John 4, 4. And here it is. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. All right? So let's say it again. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. One more time. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. So you're going to use that one this week. I promise you. Why? Because the one in the world hates you. And he's going to try to come against you, try to stir up some stuff, maybe before you ever get out of the parking lot. You know, you know. I don't know. Where you want to go? I don't know where you want to go. Let's go eat somewhere. I don't, what are you hungry for? I don't know. You, you know, you picked it last night. I ain't picking it anymore. You know, and you got to, I mean, it can hit you. Man, when you least expect it, all right? So we want to, we want to say greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world, so we're going to teach you how to do it. Today, I want to teach you about the strategies of the enemy, all right? <clears throat> now, in, in, um, in Ephesians 6, we talk about, we talked about it last week, and just want to remind you, it says, God is telling us, put on the whole armor of God. Why? So that you may be able to stand against the schemes and the strategies and the deceitful wickedness of the enemy. He is strategizing against you. We all got excited the first game that the Rockets beat the Spurs. We're thinking, ooh, ah, we're going to go. We're going to sweep them. You know, Rockets and Spurs, man, we beat them. We were up by 39 points. We're going to rock and roll. Then you had Coach Pop. He, he went to the drawing board. And he says, dudes, we got to do some scheming and some strategy because the Rockets are doing something and they're beating us. So he did a little scheming and strategy, much to the Houstonians. And that, what did they do? They set out to defeat them, right? Okay, guess what? It's the same with you and with me. Is the demons are like, they're just strategizing against you. See, they're eternal, all right? You're not going to just kill them. They're, they have their day coming in the lake of fire. That's all going to happen toward the end. But you're going to see that they want to strategize. Why? Because they watch you and they've seen you and they're like a roaring lion. And he's sitting in the grass and he's just saying, how can I mess them up today? They've seen our weaknesses. They've seen our frustrations. And they're just watching. Oh, now's a good time to throw a few darts in there. Right? That's how they work. So let me just give you a, a few things on strategy. Actually, there's... there's um, there's five. So strategy number one is lies and deception. Lies and deception. The reason is that he <coughs> loves to talk to us about these. He, he's the father of lies. Look at, at, uh, at John 8, 44. This is what it says. For you are the children of your father, the devil. Now, this is Jesus talking, and he was talking actually to some religious people. Woo. Hello. He said, you're the father, uh, children of the father of the devil, and you love to do evil things he does. He says, he was a murderer from the beginning. That's who Satan was. He's a murderer from the beginning. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy, all right? Even in the first family, the children of Adam and Eve, what a brother killed another brother. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. You're going to have thoughts go through your minds really all through the day at different times, and they're going to be nothing but lies. They're going to be thoughts towards maybe your spouse, towards your children, towards people you're working with, you know, that's going to try to turn you, steal your joy, whatever. Then it's not only lies, it's deception. Because what you're going to see is a deception is when you take a whole bunch of truth and you mix it with a lie, just a little lie. And that's, what, that's how people are being deceived. That's how you can have these cults, these cults where you mix a bunch of truth, talking about maybe even Jesus or going to heaven or whatever, and then you can mix a little lie in the middle of it. That's deception. All right, let me give you just one how it works. Some of you may be here today, and you're on a journey, and you're, and man, I'm glad you're here. But maybe you're on this journey that says, uh, you know, I'm really wanting to see if this thing of Jesus is true. Well, what you're going to have is the enemy, he can tell you something like this. You know what? Jesus Christ is true. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ really can wash away your sins. Jesus Christ really can set you free. He can do all of that, but you don't have to let him do that today. 
not today. He'll, he'll forgive you tomorrow. Let's just, just put it off. You know, it's not a big deal. You know, it's just no problem. Well, the problem of that is he didn't tell you the truth. All that other stuff was true, but you're not promised tomorrow. We just got right now. And the reason why he can catch so many in there is he goes, hey, but you got a little more partying to do. You got a little more of this and that. You got some stuff to do on the weekend. Man, whatever you do, it's all good, and one day you can get your life together. One day you're going to get married. You're going to have children. Well, when you have children, then you can start going to church. You know, all oh, that's good. It's good. Heaven is real. But don't get involved in it right now. You got some things to do. Anybody ever hear that? Oh, we all have. All right. So it, it's it's part of it. So deception. There's lies, and it's constant. The uh, strategy number two is it's accusations and condemnation. Because see, with with lies and deception, he's just trying to 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 steal your joy. He's just trying to mess with your mind a little bit, you know, so that he can he can bring you away. But when it comes to accusations and condemnation, now he's targeting you. He's coming after you. Who do you think you are coming to church? Don't they, man, if they really knew who you were, they wouldn't love you. If they really knew who you have been in your past, man, they wouldn't accept you at that church. They'd probably kick you out. That's all lies. You know, if you really knew who the preacher had been, then he's like, okay, I can come to this church. All right? No problem. If he can forgive that guy, he can forgive anybody. All right? It's all part of it. But here's what he does. He's the accuser. In Revelation 12.10, it says this, Then I heard a loud voice shouting from the heavens, It has come at last, salvation and power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser, look what it says, For the accuser of the brethren, of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. Now get this. There's always accusations that are coming against you. All right? He's going to accuse you of something. Because let me tell you how the enemy works. I'm, it, it, it's, it's pretty simple. He's going to work on you. He's going to try to get you to do something, give you 110 reasons why you ought to be doing it. But as soon as you do it, then here comes the accusations, and you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> Along with accusations, here comes the condemnation. Ah, oh, who do you think you are? Right? That's how he works. He wants to steal your joy. He does not want you. You know, you know why it's so difficult when uh, some people they'll, they'll come down to you, get saved, right? And you can come on Sunday mornings, but when we talk about getting in a care group, mm, you don't need to be in a care group. You don't need to get involved in a small group where they're going to pray or they're actually going to be talking, you know, about stuff. You don't want to name your stuff, do you? You know, you don't want to talk about your past, do you? Because they're really going to look down on you. That's all lies. But what is he doing? He's accusing you of who you used to be instead of who you are in Christ. Amen. Because now here comes the condemnation, you know. You're really not like that. Well, look, let's see what the, what the Bible says, all right. We have to understand, let me say this, you have to know who you are, all right. Every born-again believer who's in this place right now, let me tell you who you are. You are the righteousness of Christ. You are righteous, all right. That is absolute, let me just get that straight. That is absolute. The moment you get saved, the righteousness of Christ, you've been robed in his righteousness. Your heavenly Father sees you as being righteous. Here's where, the, here's where we have to understand the difference. Holiness is progression. Holiness, we're progressing with that, all right? I'm continuing to be more like Jesus Christ. There are things in my life that need to fall away so that my life begins to look more and more like Jesus. Does that make sense? It's called sanctification. That's the bigger word for it. It's I'm being sanctified. I'm being set apart from the master's use, but I got to get rid of something. We were talking about it in the MBI class a while ago. Let me ask this. When you got saved, did any of your language change? Yes. Did some of your actions change? Did some of your beverages change? Did some of the things you were smoking stop? <clears throat> okay, we got four going, mm-hmm, that's me. I know there's more you've been there. We will go. 
I'm not accusing and I'm not condemning, all right? The enemy does that. What happens? We are becoming more like Jesus Christ. So I want you to understand, but the enemy, he loves to do that. All right, let me give you this, 2 Corinthians 5.21. Lisa actually wrote a song about this one time. For he, Jesus, has made him, the Father made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the what? Righteousness of God in him. He made you righteous. Do you understand that? I'm telling you, this is where lies and accusations can come along in condemnation because he's going to tell you over and over and over again, that's not you. I know you. Look at the junk. Look at the thoughts that go through your mind. Look at everything that goes. You say, there's no way that you can be righteous. That is not true. When Jesus Christ saved you, he robed you in righteousness. That way you can say, I am the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And when the accusations come, you can say, I am in Christ. Those old things have now passed away. The penalty of sin, the power of sin, the presence of sin one day is gone. So now I'm standing right here, right with God. Amen. You need to learn that. You need to say that to the enemy. Anytime he starts coming against you and start talking bad about you, you can look in the mirror while you're shaving, guys, uh, while you're shaving, <laughs> or you're painting your face, women. Uh, say, you are the righteousness of God. Through you, Jesus, thank you that you've made me your righteousness. That's what he's saying. Right, it's an absolute, all right? So we're learning to be holy. Walking in holiness, he said, Jesus said, be holy as I am holy, so that's a progression, but it's an absolute as far as righteousness. Here's the other thing, he wants to condemn you, but Romans 8, 1, there is now therefore no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. When? Now. 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 When the enemy tries to come and speak to you, yeah, but look, no, 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 no condemnation coming this way. I mean, all right? The enemy works with accusation and, con and condemnation. The Holy Spirit works with conviction. All right? Please understand the difference between the two. Are you with me? Strategy number three. Strategy number three is doubt, unbelief, and fear. He will use these because one of the first things that he'll want to do is he, he wants you to doubt the Word of God. He wants you to doubt the Word of God. He did it. He did it with Eve in the garden. He did it with Jesus uh, in, in the wilderness, and he will do it with you. It's constant. <clears throat> Does the Bible really say that? So here's the doubt. It's when it, whenever we have doubt and fear, one of those things is he wants you to doubt the Word of God. Then he slides in right behind it, fear. All right? Let me give an example. What happens when you're dealing with sickness? What happens when you're broke? What happens? He, he wants to put in, how am I going to do it? If you're faithful in your tithes and offerings, your money and everything is protected. He said, I will meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Are you with me? And so now when we, when we hit a time where you're like, oh, man, how are we going to make it? You know, well, if you are living right and living within your budget, man, I'm, I just messed with some people right there. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Man, Pastor, you can say anything you want to. You ain't, don't mess with my budget. No, if you're living with your, within your means, <laughs> not like our government, if you're living within your means, then, you know, you can say, hey, listen, I am faithful in my tithes. I ain't I can come. And I'm telling you, we've done that. Not only as a, as a couple in our family, we've done it even as a church. When things are happening and there's roofs to be fixed or something's gone, and we're like, man, where's the money? We come to the Lord and say, look, we have been faithful to tithe. We have been faithful to this. So what do I do? I'm standing on the word of God to do what? That you'll meet all of our needs according to your riches and your bank account, which is in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. What does that do? It removes fear. All right? I'm not doubting the word of God. I am praying the word of God. Listen to me. You're going to have to, whenever the enemy comes with doubt, you better turn that around and don't let him doubt the word. You begin to pray the word. Once you begin to pray the word, then you stand not in fear, but in faith. Fear always comes to try to remove faith. You with me? Some of you, I'm telling you, some of you are living a life that's full of fear. Oh, my gosh, how am I going to do this? I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know. And you just wake up in the morning. It's on your mind. You go to bed at night. It's on your mind. You go through the day. And every conversation you have with somebody, you're just worried. I don't know how we're going to do this. It's going to do this. How are you going to do it? I don't know. I'm gonna do it. And you got all this stuff. And, man, you don't have any joy. You don't have any peace. You know, you're fearful. And that's not from God. All right? Look what the Bible says in 2 
2 Timothy 1, 7. We know this. Many of you know it. It says, for God did not give you a what? A spirit of what? <laughs> Fear. God will not give you that, that spirit. He won't. But you can receive it. All right? He doesn't give you a spirit of fear, but what? What does he give you? And what? And what? A sound mind. Love. Your love for God, your love for people, love for his word, love, 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 love. You see what I'm saying? you got, you got to grab all these. This is everyday stuff. This isn't, okay, I'll come in Sunday morning. i hear No, this will begin this afternoon. This will begin on Monday through Saturday, right? This is walking it out right here. All right, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Why? Because that's we'll see in a moment. That's where our battlefield is. So there you go. You see, fear, unbelief. It is. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? Are, are you getting it? All right, same, same. All right, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm just preaching to myself or if it's just for everybody. All right, here's strategy number four, and we have to see this. It's the battle of the mind. It's all about your thought life, and it's where victory can come immediately. Now, let me say this. When, the, when uh, In Ephesians, when it says, put on the armor of God, all right, if we talk about that, but the shield of faith, all right, we've talked about this before, but I'm going to tell you, here's how it comes. The shield of faith will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. He loves to send his fiery darts. Their their lies, their doubts, their fears, their accusations, their condemnations. All of those are the darts he wants to throw in your mind. This is the battlefield right here. All right? This is why it's important that you take a look at what you're putting in your mind. If you are, are spending all your time and you're looking at that laptop or that iPad or that phone and it's not reading scripture or if it's not listening to some preaching or it's not listening to something that's going to edify you spiritually, but you're just looking at garbage all day long, garbage in, garbage out. All right? Word in, word out. Does that make sense? So I'm telling you, you're going to have to grab a hold of what is actually coming in your eye gate and your ear gate. Because the enemy loves to, for you to just downtime, saturate your mind with junk. And if, if you're eating, look, if I ate cake all day long, I would not be happy. Uh, well, I would be happy, but I, no, I wouldn't. Be, <laughs> I would not be healthy, all right? I would not be healthy. I wouldn't be happy. For, I'd be happy for a little while, but not after a while, I think I'd be tired of cake. All right, listen, you feed on junk all the time. And then when the enemy comes and when spiritual battles come, what are you fighting with? Are you fighting with a sword or are you fighting with a noodle? You know, <laughs> you know, it ain't, you know, it doesn't work. You want the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Amen. All right. I must look, I'm trying to make it as practical as I can, but it's it's true. Listen, here's here's the other thing. In uh, in um, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4, I want you to write this down. But look at what it says. For though we walk in the flesh. This is us. We do not war after the flesh. Many times we think it's our battles, and we'll talk about that in a minute. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're not things of the flesh, all right? You're not going to see it. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We talked about strongholds last night. It's a, it's a fortified area in our life. It's a sin that we like. Or it's, a, it's a, an unforgiveness, or it's something that we're hanging on to. It's a bitterness, a hatred, and we built a fortified area against it. And what we're doing now is we're defending it. We're going to defend our lifestyle, all right? This is us. No, it's a stronghold, and it's meant to destroy you. Casting down, here it is in the minds. Think of this, all right? These are the strongholds that are in our minds. Casting down imaginations, vain imaginations, that are just going, you're just thinking, and all of a sudden, you know, you can have peace one moment, and you find yourself out in the left field somewhere, and you're all wrapped up in fear or disappointment, discouragement. And every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. Where do you get your knowledge? All right, right here. And bring it into captivity, what? Every what? Say it. Every what? Thought. One more time. Every what? Thought. The thoughts that come into your mind. Bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Bring those thoughts in. Wait a minute. Is that going to bless me or is that going to hurt me? Is that, if, if that thought comes in my mind, if it comes out, is it going to bless the ones that I love or is it going to hurt them? All right? Every single one of us, every single one of us has been guilty of that. 
We've lost it. We had a thought. You know, all of a sudden we just, and it came out. And they were, just, they were just having a good day. But no, the enemy used us. And because we didn't take that thought captive, now we're smacking somebody. And they had no, there was no reason for you to say that. There's no reason for you to hurt. What? You are, you, am, 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 I, am I preaching now? Am I? I'm trying, I'm trying to help you because this is every single day that we're going to deal with. So we see we need to bring every thought captive. Let me, let me say this, all right? What I'm telling you is what I'm, I have to do myself, all right? You have to ask the Holy Spirit, give me a spirit of discernment. Where is this, where is this thought coming, all right? And it, no matter what it is, it's a lying spirit, it could be a lustful spirit, whatever it is. But if it comes in and you say, mm, that's not of God, kick it out immediately. Just immediately. How do you work? No, in Jesus' name, get out of here and move, right? Don't dwell on it. What the enemy wants you to do is sort of like fishing. And that's, that's how the, the enemy works. Anybody, I got any fishermen in here? Anybody like to fish? Okay, look what it, yeah, I got 611. All right, hey, here's the deal. When uh, Jason caught a big old bass the other day, I'm telling you, six pound, 11 ounces, it was, it was amazing. Biggest fish he ever caught. So, God bless this fisherman. You know, you know what it says? How did he do that? He constantly was, was fishing. He was casting, casting, casting. You know what the enemy does? He just casts those thoughts. You know, hey, what are you doing? You're just sitting there and not doing anything? He's working it. He's working that top water bait, you know. He's working that little spinner bait, you know. He's, he's working that little worm on the bottom. Oh, let me try here. Mm. You know, what do you do? He's hoping that he can snag you. You know, he's hoping that there is some thought that he can get a hold of you. And we're going to see, we're going to talk about, about Doris, just one today, and then we'll talk more about next week. Listen, he's hoping that he can snag you. Why? Because he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, Whew, what is, ah, kind of getting her attention. She, did, she didn't cast that one off. You know, if, if, if you look, it's this fishing, all right. In the spring, they have, the bass have beds, all right. And they lay their eggs, and you got a big old mama bass that's sitting there, and you got this little male bass. You know, you throw a worm in there, they'll kind of pick it up and spit it out. They'll just pick it up. No, -uh. that's not going to be in my area where my babies are going to be, where my eggs are, right? But if they hang on it long enough, wah, get old big mama coming in the boat, you know what I'm saying? That's how he works with you and with me. It's just a thought. And he's hoping that you'll chew on it a little too long instead of take it and go, pfft. You know, wait a minute. Nah, that's why. Because they see that it's for their protection. They're protecting the nest. When you take every thought captive, what are you doing? You're protecting your mind from the schemes and strategies and the deceit of the enemy. Right? You can do it. I'm telling you, spit it out in the name of Jesus. Just poof, get rid of it. All right? You're going to be doing that a lot this week. Why? Because he hates you. He's always fishing. All right. Then we're going to see not only his other strategy, is uh, attacking the Word of God. The Word of God we talked about is our only offensive weapon that we need to use. And it's a sword. And this is uh, Psalm 119.11. We say this every week. And that is, thy word have I hid in my heart, what? That I might not, what? Sin. Sin against God. That is where we need to be constantly saying, God, I want your word. Be ready, be ready, be ready. In season, out of season, if something comes along, some attack, some lie of the enemy, we can say, no, nah, that's not what the word of God says. The reason why people struggle as Christians is because they don't know the word of God. I'm telling you, this is why I'm giving you all of these deals. So how do we handle intrusion? Let me go through this just quickly. One is, number one, keep your eyes on God and not on the circumstances that Satan placed in front of you. Keep your eyes on God. No matter what you're going through, some of you have been through a lot over the past six months. This is a circumstance. All right? So many of you in our church, we're grieving right now. We got some stuff. All right? It's a new, we're trying to create a new normal in, in our lives. There's some things that are happening. Don't focus on the circumstances. Focus on him. All right? In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, in everything, give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It doesn't mean that everything that happened is good. Here's one of the truths that I think I'm, I'll probably be having to learn the rest of my life. But this is, this is really it. 
When you understand that God is a sovereign God, he's sovereign, he is in control, that nothing happens unless it goes through the hands of God. Nothing happens unless it goes through his hands. Why? Because he allowed it. Not that it's all good, but he will work it. Romans 8, 28, and God causes all things to work together for good to them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. I don't understand why certain things happen. You know, I don't know why some people die when they die. I don't know why their appointment has to be that early or this one's later or whatever. I don't, there's some things I don't know, but I trust God. And so we have to keep our focus on him no matter what the circumstances are. Does that make sense? All right, and how, how do we do that? We do it with adoration and thanksgiving. Lord, I praise you because I know that you love me. That's a truth. I know that you'll never leave me. That's a truth. I know that I will have an appointment myself, and I will be home with you for eternity. That's a truth. But I know that you have the power to help me overcome anything in any situation that I'm going through. So, Father, I thank you for that. I worship you. I adore you. I thank you that you're going to walk with me every step of the way. Amen. That's, that's how God helps us. Through. So he doesn't, he doesn't want us to get caught up in that. All right? Here's what happens. God will either calm the storm around us, he'll calm the storm in us, or he will take us through the storm. Amen? So you've you got to grab it. Our focus has to be on him. All right? L look at Peter when he was walking on the water. Jesus said, hey, come on. Hey, can I come out to you? Yeah, come on. Oh, big waves, everything, man. He was wave riding, you know, without a board. You know, he's, he's walking out. Everything was fine until he took his eyes off of Jesus and put him on the circumstances. And when he put him on circumstances, he began to sink. All right? The reason why some may be dealing with depression right now is because you've taken your eyes off of God and you put them on the circumstances. You need to get them back. This is where your peace is going to come. This is where your deliverance is going to come. That's for somebody. All right? We have to ask ourselves this. When we go through this, is this intrusion by Satan or legal access through disobedience? When we're going through the circumstances, are these things, is it by legal access is this something where I've just been obedient? I've allowed the, the enemy to come in, and man, here he is. He comes in. Am I, am I allowing that? You know, we have to ask ourselves that. So we have to ask this. What area is the devil illegally trying to capture? Maybe some areas in your life he's trying to capture. What door did I open to give him the right to come in? So when we're going through tough circumstances, ask ourselves this thing. Maybe it's a season that God has just taken us through. He'll lead us in, in the areas of trials so that he can mature us and he can help us grow up, all right? Here's the other one. People are not your enemy, and we talked about that. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And then we need to see this. Tell God about your problem instead of focusing on your problem. Tell God about your problem instead of focusing on your problem. What happens is we'll spend a lot of our time talking about the problem. Instead of talking to God about it. Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen, but it, it is. So, can, can I say this? This, this? this is one thing. Maybe for some of you this may sound weird. I believe that the more honest we get with God, the stronger we're going to be in our walk. I, I do. All right. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me tell you. You're going to be tempted. There's going to be a lot of areas that you're going to be tempted in. You know what? Be honest with God about that. For something, for some reason, I'm really tempted in that area. Talk to him about it. That's the point of conversation. That's the point of prayer. If you go and act like, oh, that, that don't bother me. Well, that don't bother me. Oh, I don't, you know. You can have pride. You can have spiritual pride. You can have a holier-than-thou attitude when really on the inside you're struggling with some stuff. All right? I believe those times when you're saying, God, I'm really dealing, I'm battling with this thing of fear. Or I'm battling with this thing of depression. I'm, I'm battling this. I want to talk to you about this. And the moment we get to that is the moment that victory begins to happen in our lives, all right? So where, you know, you got to ask this. Where, where is, where's your focus when you go through tough times? Where's your focus right now? Some of you are going through a lot, lot of different situations right here in this room. Where is your focus? And it needs to be back on the Lord. And here's, the, here's the, the, the last thing we need to look at is we resist Satan and draw near to God, all right? 
In James 4, 7 and 8, this is what happens. And this is the authority that you have. The power of God himself. Submit to the authority of God. Now, we talked about this while ago in class. The reason why we struggle is we don't understand, just like I told you earlier, about the boundless love and the power of God. Do you understand that God spoke Jesus? We just, we just read the scripture. We, we say it every Sunday. In the beginning was, uh, was the word, you know, the word was with God. The word was God. Everything was created by him that was created. Jesus. Everything, he created everything. So if he created everything, that means all the stars in space, all the different planets, all the galaxies, all of those, you know, that is, you know, light years away, he created that. We want to keep him in a manger. We want to keep him hanging on a cross when he is God Almighty. All right? And when you submit to that power, then you have the power that created the universe. All right, now listen to what I'm saying. There is a spiritual realm. They have to give, they have to submit to the power of God. And when you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and the enemy comes against you, when you use the name of Jesus, when you say, the Lord rebuke thee, the Lord cast you out, the Lord Jesus, when you use that in the spirit realm, they have to bow to that. All right, so what does it say? We want to submit to the authority of God once you understand, not your authority, don't go fighting the devil on your own. He's going to whip you every time. All right. You, you submit to God's authority. The moment you do that, then you resist the devil. They, listen, it's like once we have shut doors, once we are walking in obedience and we use that power, that, I don't know if it's angelic beings, it's Holy Spirit, whatever, but that is removing him from ground that you may have. They're removing him away and they got to carry him away. He's got to go. Do you understand that? Doesn't mean that later he's going to come back. He may be knocking on your door again for something, but he has to go. And he what? And he will what? Flee. He will flee from you. You have to understand what's happening in the spirit realm when you speak the word of God. Are you with me? Some of you are like, well, this sounds kind of spooky. No, it's truth. Submit to the authority of God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. When you put on the whole armor of God, it says, having done all, stand. Stand. Don't run away. You stand in the power of God. Are you all still with me? All right. I'm going I'm to give you this, this right here. I want to talk about legal ground just for a moment because I want to help you. I, this is just a teaching. I'm trying to get you there, all right? Two ways the enemy comes. He'll come legally and illegally, all right? And it feels like sometimes that maybe the, you ever feel like the, the devil just has keys to your front door? He can just come anytime he wants to, you know? I'm just like, man, you again? Come on, you know? He says, listen, let me tell you, Jesus already has the keys, all right? When he died on the cross, he, he ascended. In Revelation uh, 1.18, it says, And the ever-loving, ever-living God, living in and beyond all time and space, he said, I die, but see, I am alive forevermore. This is Jesus talking to the churches of Asia Minor. He said, I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and of hell, or Hades, the realm of the dead. He's got it. Jesus is already in control. He got the keys. The devil doesn't have the keys to your life. All right, you know, you know what happens? He has to knock on your door through lies, deception, accusation, condemnation, all of those things. He knocks on your door through all of that. He's waiting for you to open the door and give him legal access into your life. All right, so I want to talk about that just for a moment. Hang in with me because you'll see it. All right, we have to understand this is what is legal ground. It's when you are a parent, ancestors, because it says that there's generational curses from down to the third and fourth generation. All right? That what? An ancestral line have opened the door and shaken hands with the devil and welcomed him in. That's legal ground. All right? And uh, when, when you look at it in Ephesians 4.27, it says, Do not give place or terrain or land. I want you to look at your life as the promised land. God wants to take you to the promised land. All right, let me, let me teach you something just for a second. When you look at, at your life, the enemy is always trying to find some territory in your life that he can dominate. Okay? And so he comes knocking on the door, and he will try all types of ways to get you to open the door and to legally uh, allow him to come in. When you do, you understand you're giving up land of your life. 
Okay, it could be your mind, it could be you're fearful, or it could be a lot of different things, a lot of, a lot of habits or addictions. You know, it could be a lot of different things. And he, you're giving him that legal access. And you, and you can't use the authorities because you've already given him legal access or papers until you go back to the judge and you, get, you change things. It's like going to the judge and saying, look, I want to give him legal access into my territory. All right, here's the papers. He's dwelling there. Listen, for some of you, there's, there's addictions, there's sin, there's strongholds, whatever, and the enemy has legal access into your life. And what he wants to do is he wants to come in and he wants to torment you. And the whole time he's lying to you saying, hey, isn't this fun? Aren't you having a good time now? You know, hey, this is awesome. Let's just keep this thing going because everything is cool. And what you don't realize is the destruction maybe of your children, of your grandchildren, of things happening in your life. Why is it? Because you open a door or an ancestor. Your parents open a door and you're still dealing with it. Does, does that make sense? Here's a scripture that, let me follow it. All right? So we, we don't want to give the, him foothold or access or give him any ground in our life. We want to take that back. Here's, here's the reason. One of the scriptures that we, we during times of revival or prayer, 2 second, second Chronicles seven fourteen, says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and they'll pray and they'll seek my face and they'll turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. You with me? You have land, you got territory in your life. And what God has been laying on my heart is that there's a lot of people here that they're not free. They've got territory in their life. They were hurt when they were younger. They were, they were struggling with the sin. There's abuse that happened. There's anger. There's unforgiveness. There's a lot of things that are going on in their lives, and they're bound. And God said, if you will humble yourself and you'll pray and you'll seek my face and you'll turn from these wicked ways, I'll heal you. It's legal ground. Now, we're going to maybe go a little deep, but I'm trying to help you with this. Here's what happens. There may be times, and there's free access, all right? I'm just going to name just a few. And you say, man, that may not be me, but let me just, just say, here's free access, all right? You go back. Some people, it's palm readers, tarot cards, Ouija boards, horoscope, fortune tellers, pornography, drugs, addictive substances. Anything like that is opening the door and saying, you have access and legal right to come into my life. You get that? It's serious. Some people say, hey, man, what's your horoscope today? You'd be surprised how many times that we open the door to the enemy, you know, and it's just fun stuff. No big deal. It's legal access for those enemy, the tormentors to come in. I hope you're still with me. All right? Mm. Legal ground can only be recovered through genuine repentance. It's when you really genuinely repent, not from your mind. I'm going to explain this, all right? Repentance means this, that you hate the sin that has enslaved you, that's kept you in bondage, and you're actually, you're sick and tired and weary of that sin. You know when you get sick of it? When it starts destroying your life. Or when it's destroying your marriage. You know when, 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 when people usually come in for marriage counseling, it's when they have some legal access of the enemy, and they thought, oh, well, it's just no big deal. You know, we can kind of do this lifestyle for a while, and they don't, they don't understand this whole thing is just destroying their life. It's crumbling the foundation of their marriage, and they have problems. So this is important. Listen, repentance means you hate it, all right? And understand that it's not sickness. It's not weakness. It's not just a disease. It's sin, all right? And once we understand this is sin, this Broke the heart of God. This has, has um, nailed my Savior to the tree. This is sin. The wages of sin is still what? Death. And we have to understand that. That's something that's really going to destroy your life, all right? Freedom will not come until you repent. You let God take away the enemy's legal ground that the demonic realm has in your life. This has to be a decision from your heart to God's. Many Christians, they want God to fix some of their problems. Man, if God could just fix my problem. You know, I got a little problem. You know, hey, Pastor, pray with me, man. I got a little thing going on. Yeah, but let's go a little bit deeper. 
Where does the enemy have legal access in your life? So that you can get set free. Let's move on. 1 John 1, 9 says this, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Here's what happens. Two ways the enemy comes. If you're looking at this book, if you read it, I've given it out to so many people. There's two ways the enemy comes, legally and illegally. He'll try to take an area of your life and you say, no, I understand that, and we kick him out. We resist the devil and he flees from us. But there's legal access. It's when he's knocking on your door, you open the door, and he comes in legally. All right? You have given him legal territory that he can reside in. And that whole time that he's there, he's there meaning to destroy everything about you. All right? So we understand that. One of the doors, there's five doors that he knocks on. The first one, and this one we're going to be through. We're not going through five doors today. We'll go through the other four next week. But the first one that I want us to deal with, and that is willful disobedience. Willful disobedience. Of our own will, we choose to sin. All right? Now, let me, let me tell you how, how that works. What's happening today is the enemy is coming through lies. He's trying to make, and let's just put it clear, he's trying to make men into women, women into men. You know, he's, he's trying to, to, to create unfaithfulness, you know, in, in marriages and all types of things. He's always he's bringing something. That's how he works. All right? And so we have a choice, sin or not to sin, all right? You have a choice, but you get carried away. The Bible says when you look in, in James 1 that there is Satan's LSD, there's lust, there's sin, and there's death. He comes with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, okay? So he wants, hey, if you will do this, man, it's going to feel so good, all right? Woo, man, awesome. It's a lie. You go, no, it does feel good. Yeah, but the condemnation's coming right after it. All right? That feeling ain't going to last that long. Hello. So let's look at the door of disobedience. Disobedience. It's a willful action or decision against the Word of God. I know what the Word says, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hello? I mean, I'm telling you, I talk with people all the time, yeah, I know, I know, man, hey, but you know, hey, it's just no big deal, I mean, you know, hey. No, it's sin. You're living in sin. Stop it. Breaking the heart of God. You know, we, we want to wink at sin. It's just sin. Ain't that big a deal? We just, man, what's a big deal, preacher? Sin. What do you mean I'm living in sin? So what's the big deal? You are walking in disobedience to God. And God is saying, man, I cannot bless disobedience. I want to, I'm drawing you. I'm wooing you. You're breaking my heart. You are committing. Jesus is saying to us as the bride of Christ, you are committing adultery against me. Are you with me? That's what he's saying. You just think sin is no big deal. Read the book of Jeremiah. Read over and over what the prophet was saying that God is saying to his people, look, man, I have done all of this for you. I created you as a nation. I brought you out of Egypt. I destroyed Pharaoh's army. I brought you through the wilderness. I fed you every day. I clothed you every day. I have taken care of you. I have given the promised land to you. I have done all of this for you. And what do you do now? You make these idols, and you don't even worship me, and you're, you're, you're committing spiritual adultery against me, the one who loves you. And now Jesus comes along as our Savior, and he says, wait a minute, I've come to set you free. I've come, to, and I hung on a cross, and the blood that I shed is here to forgive you. It's breaking the power of sin off your life. It's over. It's over. He said, but look, I broke the power of sin off your life, so get it off of your life. Repent and come back to me. That's what he's saying. It's not, oh, but it's a little sin. Hey, I hope you care. No, it is sin. And God is calling his church to repent of sin. And we look at it like it's no big deal. And here's the door. Listen. Your door is open. Listen to me. Yeah, but it's sin. No. You, by committing and living in that sin, you just open the door and you allow the enemy to come in, and what he's doing is he's taking legal ground 
to torment you. That's what your sin is doing. Yeah, but it's just a little. No. You've given the enemy legal access into your life. And I'm here to tell you, that's a door that's open. And it's 2, 5, 14. And when you have a door, we'll, we'll speak about this later. When you have a door open, there are 14 root spirits that are mentioned in the Bible, and you have just given every one of them legal access into your life to torment you. There's a lying spirit. There's a spirit of bondage. You wonder why you still have these addictions and why you're struggling with these sins. There are doors open, and they, you've given them rights, legal access to come in and destroy you. Preacher, why are you preaching us a message on freedom? Because Jesus wants to set you free. <laughs> Amen. He wants to set you free. <laughs> Let me give you this verse. Romans 6, 16. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You become a slave of that. Now, I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you, I'm not preaching this message of, you know, back in the day when I was growing up, you know, preachers would come in and they'd talk about, you know, smoking and drinking and chewing and dipping and hanging out with the girls that do and dancing and, you know. No, I'm not, I'm not one up here to go, you're going to hell, smoke a cigarette, you know. No, we're not doing that. But let me tell you what Jesus wants from his bride. He wants you free. He wants to be the master of your life. And let me, let me say this. I'm going to say this in love. Just, just hang in it with me and receive it in love. But you've got, some of you here in this room, you've got masters over your life. Some of them are little bitty round things like that. Little white sticks with tobacco and nicotine in it. You know what it's doing? It's controlling your life. You need it. You've got to have it. I gotta have it. I just ate a meal. I gotta have it. Drink my cup of coffee. Gotta have it. You with me? You, why? Why? I'm, I'm I'm saying this because I love you. I love you. It's an addiction. You just left the door wide open. And what have you done? Don't you realize that you became the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to what? How clear do we have to make it? Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous what? Living. Hello? I don't know how much simpler that the Word of God can be, but it's just pretty daggum simple, all right? So I want the cameras to keep rolling. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Keep, keep them rolling because there's some people who are watching today who need this. We're going to stop right here. And I'm going to just ask the Holy Spirit to begin to reveal some things to you. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Please, please don't, do not, do not listen to the enemy right now that's saying, all right, come on, it's late, you know, let's go eat, let's, let's, let's slip away. All right, don't do that. God wants to set you free. All right? So let me just talk about it just for a moment. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Father, we pray that you begin to reveal anything in our lives that you do not like, that's there because the enemy has placed it there. It's there because we've opened the door of willful disobedience. We have chosen to let the enemy in. We have become slaves to this sin. And Father, we understand by your word, you said it leads to death. And Father, we want to be living examples of you. So, Father, I pray right now that you would do a work that only you can because you love everyone in this room. And I pray you'd set them free. Now, I want you to really take a look into your heart. And I want you to ask about this door of willful disobedience. What sin, and let's call it sin, not a weakness, Kind of weak in this area, preacher? No, it's sin. Let's just call it sin. What willful choice are you making that you know because Holy Spirit's revealed it to you? 
that's sin in your life. Right now, the Holy Spirit is revealing it to you. And you have to ask the question, do I want to hang on to this or do I want to repent? We just quoted scripture. If we confess our sin, agree with God what he already knows about us in our life, agree with him. Open your heart to him right now. Let him speak to you. What are you hanging on to? This isn't, listen to me, this isn't accusation and condemnation. No, that's of the enemy. This is the Holy Spirit. He'll bring conviction in your life. What sin are you hanging on to? Is it lust? Pornography? Unforgiveness? What is it? Are there addictions in your life that you just enjoy doing? And what you're doing is, well, I can't stop. Who's telling you that? That's a lie. God has boundless power to deliver you. Right now, right now, what is he saying? What is he saying? What sin? Do you see, do you see the consequences of that sin? If I continue in the sin, what are the consequences? Do you understand that you're giving legal ground to the enemy? And did he get access into your life through his lies? Did he deceive you? Or maybe you're holding on to unforgiveness because somebody hurt you in your past? We'll talk about those next week, but I want us to deal. We choose. Let me say this. Whatever he's revealing to you, I want you to understand that he's here to forgive you, cleanse you, and set you free, and take back that area of your life right now. Right now. So from your heart to his, confess it. Father, this is in my life. I've got this addiction, but I want it to be broken today in Jesus' name. Father, there's this sin. I'm harboring bitterness towards somebody. I'm harboring unforgiveness towards somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm hung up on pornography. Don't say, I just can't seem to break it. Confess it. I'm in a perverted lifestyle. Confess it. I'm allowing things and I'm watching things that are not pleasing to you. Confess it. Confess it. Right now, we submit to the authority of God himself. We resist the devil. We take back that legal ground that is ours. And we claim our forgiveness and our freedom in Jesus' name. Right now. I want you to thank him. Thank him. Just thank him. Lord Jesus, I praise you that I am set free in Jesus' name. Now listen, I want to be sensitive. I want to be sensitive to the fact, and we'll talk about this more next week, when it comes to unforgiveness. I know some of you, you've been hurt, you've been wounded. But do not let that be a reason to keep a door open. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. I believe God has taken us down this journey so you can do more than just come in, sit in a service, sing some songs, hear a message and leave and walk out of here still bound up. God wants to set you free. Father, your word says this. You says that if we confess to you and recognize it, and that we're sick of this sin. We're weary and we're tired of it. We don't want it dominating our life. We don't want it to master our lives. We don't want to be a slave to that anymore. We want to be set free once and for all in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, we command that every door, Lord, is there repenting of their sin, that these Areas that were given over to the enemy, we're taking them back in Jesus' name. We're taking this area of our life back. We will not be dominated by that anymore. The past is the past. We're set free from it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you right now just to begin to pray and thank him, thank him for his freedom, that the power of God has set you free from that right now, right now.
in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been dominated by fear, and now you're going to live by faith in the name of Jesus. You've struggled with depression. Depression is just anger turned inward. God is going to set you free right now. Believing. Believing. That's why the enemy wants you to doubt. He's lying to you. He wants unbelief and doubt. No. Believe that God loves you. Believe that you're the righteousness of Christ right now. Right now. Father, I thank you for doing a work that only you can do. And Father, we pray that you close the door of willful disobedience in our life. Deliver us, O oh God. As you said, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways. Then you'll hear us. You'll forgive us of our sin. And right now we're claiming that you're healing our land. And we thank you for that. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed just for a moment, I want to ask, does anyone here who has never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you do not have Jesus living within you, if you've never made that encounter with him, you're bound by a master, and it's not God. It's the enemy. He has bound your life, but he wants, Jesus wants to set you free, and he wants to save you. So I want to give you an opportunity. There's any, there's anyone here who does not know Jesus, and you ask, I'm lost. Maybe that's you. I want to pray for you. I'd like for you just to raise your hand. Pastor, pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hand right back there. Anybody else? Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. I'm lost. If I died today, I have no idea where I'd go. I see your hand right back there in the back. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let me tell you, for those who are raising your hand, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says today that you can be saved, that you admit that you're a sinner. The Bible says that the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus, and he's offering that to you. And my prayer to you is open the door to your heart to him and allow Jesus to come in. I want those who raised your hand, would you look up at me just for a moment? Just look up at me. I see you. I see you back here and even behind you over there. Listen, do you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Let's ask him right now. Okay, let's ask him. Right back there. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Back in there. Amen. Amen. Church family, let's pray with these. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you want to get this settled. Let's pray this prayer. But mean it with all your heart. Pray this. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross from my sin. I have sinned against you, and I'm sorry. I repent of my sin. I turn from my wicked ways, and I turn to you, Jesus. I open the door to my heart. I invite you to come in. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Save my soul. Give me eternal life. Baptize me in the power of your Holy Spirit so I may live for you, serve you, obey your word, love you, and close all the doors in Jesus' name. I believe that you, Jesus, rose again on the third day so that I could be saved today. Thank you, Jesus for saving my soul. You're my Lord. You're my master. You're my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want our prayer partners to Thank you so much for being a part of our online streaming. I hope you really enjoyed the message today. And I want you to just take it to heart. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you, just take it to heart. And I pray that if you have never received Jesus Christ, let's all stand up. You come on. That today would be If you got saved today, tell one of the prayer partners we want to get you a word. That's what we're praying for you. And if you wonder how do I get to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, well, let me tell you. It's pretty simple. 
Listen first of all, me. Jesus loves if you more If you're struggling with something, let's hang in here so together, okay? Just for a moment. He's you're struggling with something. You come on. Know him. And let's so close that door. Him, let's make sure. Let's come and pray. That we've sinned all right, this God. time is for you. Everybody has. The Bible says it all. It's sin. We've fallen short of the glory of God. Well, we recognize that. We don't have to be told that. We know that. Come the on, honor thing this is, time. It says that God demonstrated his love for us, and that's you. God loves you even though that we were sinners. That's how much he cares for you. So you got to get it out of the way. He's not judging you. He already sent his son to die in our place so that we could have all of our sin placed on him. And then we believe we had faith in him that that's what he did. And he did it because he loved us. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death. Well, Jesus took our death sentence for us. And then it doesn't leave it as a negative. It says that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. It's not words. It's not a not giving money to somebody. All of those are good things. It's not bring salvation. So we pour out our place. We pour out our place. It's your bed. Come in, love. So we pour out our place. You pour. I want to turn to you. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, the boss of my life. Jesus, come in and save you. Come on, love you. Obey your word you all the days of my life, and that's what you can do. You you know. are and I'll tell you, Jesus you is waiting for the moment that you see the darkness. He will. My encouragement to you find a great Bible school, a Bible preaching church. Every Get heart if you're in the Houston area, 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 you're in different parts of the country, or even around the world. Show me.